on something. Oh, we have a question? Yes. From the front row? Do you want to use the microphone or just yell real loud so we can hear it? Can you tell us the story of the red scarf? Oh. <laughs> We've heard this a couple of times and it's a great one. When we went to an absolutely beautiful <coughs> school group and they had such wonderful questions, yes. I got the same question about that story from last year when we did this. So I guess we better tell it. Okay? The story of the red scarf? Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. Because I was such a good... With camouflage. Them, this is called camouflage. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, the wagon the uh, the well we captured that uh, wagon that with the munitions on it. But this was dangling from the back end, like just the way we do now. With it. we have lumber on a truck or something, just as a, a and uh, so while it was back there, I I felt the material, the nice soft material, and I thought, hey, you know. Army uniforms are not very good on me. So I, I took this flag off and I thought, hey, make a nice little scarf. It's not very good for camouflage, but anyway, I put it on. It was very comfortable. So I wore it, and i tuck it underneath if, if things were a little rough. But anyway, I went back to the gun position, and the sergeant major saw me. He says, Van Room, get rid of that thing. I said, what do you got that around your neck for? So I said, yes, sir, I'll, I'll do that. And but then next time I went up to the front, I thought, the heck with you, I'm more comfortable. So I wore it and I forgot and I came back and I still had the scarf on. He said, I thought I told you to get rid of that thing. <laughs> so I agreed, yes, sir. Would you believe the third time? You know? <laughs> and he just he just looked at me and he glared. He didn't he thought I guess it's a hopeless case. <laughs> but I considered it as my lucky scarf, you know. And, uh, so he I wore this, no one could see him because yeah. it was said no. <laughs> I brought it so I brought it home and I have it framed. <laughs> so Oh we have a question over here. With all the vehicles and all the mach uh, <coughs> machinery that used gasoline, uh, how much problem was it to supply gasoline to everything in that time? <coughs> that's that's really a good question because they really they ran. There was a pipeline, prefabricated pipeline. There was this thing, a spool. It was about the size of this room, of uh, a cable, and they had this already on the British side to run it across the channel to supply fuel. And uh, they also had huge dumps of, of uh, uh, these five gallon cans initially, but then they ran that pipeline across. It was a prefab pipeline and they, they could supply an amazing amount and you know, just a few days after D-Day, uh, the Spitfires had a, not an airport, but a landing place. They, they laid down um, fencing as a base. You know, caterpillars would flatten it. They laid down this wire and they landed. So within a few days, these planes were taken off, but they also fueled them there. They were right on right next to where the fighting was going on. So uh, they were a tremendous help. In fact, one, one case uh, where they broke through uh, as a counterattack on us, um, it, was, it was really, because it was a very small area that we had uh, achieved. And uh, uh, they broke through the lines and they were coming down. They had an armored column that was heading straight for our gun position. And those Spitfires caught them on the road and just totally destroyed the whole works. You know, it was, it was, yes, sweetheart. <laughs> Why do you have those toys there? <laughs> now that's a good question. We have one toy that belongs here and that's the rabbit. And all of those toys are there because if I put the speaker on a box, that, then we don't get feedback. And otherwise, if the speaker is up, it either gets in the way or if it's too close to the microphones, the microphone goes wee really loud. So that's why the toy box is there. Yeah. 
<laughs> that, that is a, that, that's probably moment. been a question that's just been burning in your mind all day. <laughs> Why all those toys? Why are we playing with those yeah. toys? <laughs> the important it, things are important. That's for but, sure. It gives me a lot of hope when I see young people that are that are interested in finding out about the war and, and the sacrifice veterans made. So I think we have, maybe have time for one or two more questions, but I think we should give a hand to the young people and to my dad for coming here and showing an interest. And we have another question. I don't know how to put it, but how is like, what was your main problem or source that you, you found was the lowest in war? Like, the main problem? Yeah, for like your The thing sources, that made you feel like, the lowest, the thing that made you like, the saddest. Um, no, not necessarily no. that, but like, like for like gasoline or all oh. the things that you had to pay for. What was like the worst, like the worst thing out of the finances that you had to deal with that the uh, had to deal with? What did you like lack the most? What was the worst thing that you didn't have? <gasps> Corned beef. <laughs> there was oh. there's some of these horrible things. Spam. My dad says, "Well, that, that was well, you know, pretty they, good." They <laughs> had what they called a. Uh, Compo boxes. It was a square box, and it had everything in it. it had toilet paper. It had uh, but food. It had uh, a tea mixed with. Uh, anyway, it wasn't very good tea, but it was something <laughs> used. But these uh, these cans of uh, of meat, and we would you know make a little fire sometimes um, and cook up some of this stuff. But there was one. Um, brand that was called Donald Cook's Delicious Stewed Steak. <laughs> uh, it sounds it, wonderful. It, it, came, it came from Argentina. <laughs> and uh, my brother, my Verna's brother with the infantry, he said, uh, he swore it was mutton, you know. <laughs> he, said, he said there was not much steak in that. But anyway, we had to empty the case before we got another one. So this stuff would, wouldn't be used. So I had a system, I would dig a hole and bury it, you know. So this, in, in Europe, there's these underground pits of Donald Cook's delicious things. <laughs> and sometimes they have potatoes. <laughs> yeah, you, you, could, you could dig up potatoes. <gasps> he told me just the other day a story I'd never heard before about one of his friends saying, there's a bunch of chickens loose. Oh, if you go with me, because the, the civilian didn't have a gun, you use your gun. And I'll show you where the chickens are, and then we'll half the chickens. And they went off and they came back with chickens for everybody. Yeah, that was very nice. A great hunting expedition. But he, he was kind of reticent about, uh, he said, uh, he said, how far is this? And I thought, oh man, you know, he said, I think it was about three miles. And uh, I thought, uh, he'll, he'll never go that. So I said, it's more than a mile, you know. And so off he went with this fellow, he got the chickens, he came back, he didn't say anything to me, and then one time when he cornered me, he said, uh, you were right, it was more than a mile. <laughs> but we did have the chickens, so <laughs> there you go. Is there one more, is there one more question, or should we, uh, last question, or should we head for the cookies and cookies? Oh, I think that's it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. For this. You can come up and ask my dad too. If you bring him a cookie, you can ask him. Any questions. Uh, I should tell you one story before you head off. Uh, my dad was at the hospital at 10:30 last night and not feeling very well with a really strong pain, and he's had some some bypasses and stents put in, so it could have been something with his heart. And he was there until 3 o'clock in the morning. And my big worry, I really wanted him to be better. He said, well, you might have to do that talk tomorrow. <laughs> so I said to the doctor, please fix him up. I said, if, if you're not feeling well enough, I said, I can do it. But it's, it's not going to be the same as someone that was there first time. So I said, if you're not feeling well, maybe I'll do half the questions. Well, I got in three or four comments, but I didn't get very well. And this is this is a picture from one of the dad yeah, girls the, the, that the, came the to Canada. Dad yeah. girl, Carol Dad. She visited my mom, and uh, what they would do, uh, what she did was she did this little sketch because that was important to write letters to me 
uh, while she was uh, visiting my mom. So that was the, uh, the uh, what they did when, when she visited was, it was important to write letters to me. So she did that sketch. So it's rather, it's rather quite unique. I don't think it's, uh, uh, you know, it's been around for a while, of course. So we, uh, what I'll probably do, we intentionally didn't take any pictures of our wonderful audience today. And what I'll probably do tonight when this is over is if the video came out okay, I'll put it on YouTube. If you look up Charleswood Historical, you can see it if you want to show someone else. And I will send a YouTube link to Holland because my sister's just been there for a day. And then some of the people in Vlyman, the local historian, the one who's giving her a tour of the church, can take a look at our wonderful audience and their questions here in Canada. So that's but you it. know, when we do go to schools, uh, I get such a, a, a real thrill out of that to see these beautiful young people, you know, well-dressed, uh, well-taught, uh, orchestras, uh, you know, uh, choirs, and, and I, I see this performance put on in, in real professional style. And, and it's it's a real thrill to do that kind of thing. It, it's it's noted and it's uh, it's appreciated. I really love that. Uh, I get the biggest kick out of just watching their faces. Mm -hmm. And you know, and they're so uh, the teachers are very good at organizing them. You know, if there's a, some rowdy little guys or something, there's a teacher sitting there, <laughs> <laughs> and they don't dare make a bad. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much.